So my uh, slides are available at the URL at the top there, timmywill.github.io slash ideal for low bandwidth. And uh, so a little bit about me, some of this he already said, but I'm uh, a member of the jQuery core team. And there have been times when I've enjoyed venturing into the ominous maw of sizzle, uh, rewriting it a few times. Um, uh, multiple times at one conference, one time, yeah. Um, I recently joined OpenTable, helping to build re restaurant products, and I like Doctor Who. Uh, as, uh, as some of you may have guessed from my sweatshirt. If you're curious, my favorite doctor is David Tennant. And I will argue with that, or, or argue with you on that point. Um, so, perhaps the most important point I can promulgate from this stage uh, is one in support of the argument that the size of jQuery is not necessarily relevant. But first, let's talk about the size of jQuery. Uh, the minified and compressed size is the only size that we care about. Uh, and I'll just say why. Uh, this is Matthias Binance. He worked on JSPerf and HTML5 boilerplate. Uh, he says, sure, jQuery has gotten bigger over time, but every new release pat uh, patches bugs and or introduces new features. The jQuery file size page aims to demonstrate the importance of HTTP compression and minification. Um, so everyone, oh, I just messed up my notes here. So everyone should be using gzip compression or some form of compression when serving their assets. If you're not, uh, you might be that guy who repeatedly includes more versions of jQuery on the page until it works. Uh, so here is a chart of jQuery versions and their sizes. I've included a few of the older versions for comparison. Uh, you can see that 144 came in at 27. Uh, 0.1 kilobytes, uh, 29.9, 33.6, 32, 32, 33. So um, as you can see, jQuery's size has been floating around 32, 33 kilobytes for a while now. And uh, 2.x drop support for old, ID, old IE. So that's most of the 4K that's missing from uh, 2.1. The jQuery core team is incisively particular about every line of code that makes it into the code base. Um, you know, sometimes a significant increase in the size of the minified file will actually correspond to a decrease in the size of the compressed file. Uh, I know, mind blown, right? Our, our reaction is usually WCF gzip, uh, but we measure every commit, and then Richard Gibson comes in and shaves off 20 bytes to make us look better. Um, but yes, the team is constantly weighing the performance, readability, and size with the uh, effectiveness of every bug fix or feature. The practice is a good one. It's, uh, it's what experienced developers do, and yet some developers complain about the size of jQuery when they really should be watching videos on uh, jankfree.org, uh, measuring time to first paint on webpagetest.org, and using tools to identify and expunge performance bottlenecks. At one point, somebody clever pointed out that your images are probably larger than all of your JavaScript. Uh, Google sampled four billion websites, and you can see that the average size of assets such as HTML and images uh, have a generally larger impact on the total size of a web page. Uh, than scripts. It's very possible that a page has one image that's bigger than all of your scripts combined. But we all agree that we'd like it to not take more than a few seconds for a page to load, uh, even on mobile devices. And mobile usage on the web is continuously burgeoning. Uh, some poor saps on deficient cellular networks or slow mobile devices that take forever to analyze what's being downloaded are constantly dealing with uh, a web that doesn't optimize for them. 
And while I seriously doubt that the size of jQuery is the problem for any site taking too long to render, the, uh, there is something to be said for consistent dependency management and organization of your modules. In our business, uh, best practices are always changing, um, but we have to keep up or we'll become irrelevant ourselves. And there are principles and best practices that have proven to make our, life easy, our lives easier. And we trust, you know, rock star developers to deliver timely advice to our social networks and RSS feeds. Um, sorry, Paul. Uh, when you've adopted a principle such as capitalize on JavaScript modules and combine your scripts in production, it's not entirely unreasonable to ask that people like Dave and Michal and Oleg and Richard and Julian and myself uh, help you apply such a principle ubiquitously. And custom builds of jQuery have become far more flexible uh, since jQuery has been meticulously partitioned into AMD modules. With more versatility than ever, you can package only what you need. There's not much point in having code you never use, right? Um, we've made it easy to navigate the modules that constitute jQuery core. Uh, along with the built versions of jQuery, the source folder containing all of jQuery's modules uh, is now included with NPM and Bower packages, uh, as well as tagged releases on GitHub. Each file in the source folder is a module and any module can be included or excluded from a custom build. So demo, I'm gonna go over to my jQuery repo and make a custom build. I've already cloned the repo, I've installed the NPM packages, and I'm just gonna use grunt tasks to make custom builds. Um, personally, I never use effects. Even the author of the effects module says not to use it and use CSS animations and transitions instead. And for that, all we need is class manipulation. So I'm just gonna remove effects here. And you'll notice that it also removed between an animated selector, which are its dependencies. And you can do this with any module. So if we go and look at what was created, bring this in here. You'll see in the header that the excluded modules are listed at the top and have been omitted. So I'm gonna make another build. I can also remove Ajax. Which is our largest module. So it might be convenient for you to remove that if you don't need it. I can also use a slightly different syntax for uh, implicit exclusion rather than implicit inclusion. Uh, in other words, uh, grunt custom with Grunt Custom, it's assumed that you want most things except for a few modules. Uh, so, but there's another task called Grunt Build. Ignore the asterisk there. That is the lower level task that Custom uses. Um, but with this task, only the core module is implicitly included, and you then can tack on the modules that you use. So maybe all I want is jQuery's implementation of deferreds. And that doesn't even have uh, the init constructor for jQuery. It's just got uh, some core methods, and then down at the bottom, that was, that was the callbacks dependency of deferreds, and then deferreds at the bottom. And that's all there is. And sometimes all I want is jQuery's classes or class manipulation. Uh, but let me show you 
So this is the source folder that gets included with everything. So under attributes, we got adder, classes, prop, uh, support module, and val. So maybe all we want is classes, which has add class and toggle class and has class. So I just specify the location under the source folder. And it'll uh, build a version of jQuery that just has classes and its dependencies. But for my purpose, I'm going to use custom and create a build that excludes effects, uh, deprecated, which, has, which is not very long, and Q, because I don't use Q. <clears throat> and now I have a custom build that I can plug into my website. And incidentally, these modules can be can also be included directly, uh, rather than including the built version of jQuery. So in the example there, uh, we're requiring we're requiring the deferred module and using it off a, a bare bones jQuery object. But let's get pragmatic. Uh, how does the custom build I just created actually affect a page? So I've already included my personalized jQuery into one of my websites and run some tests on webpagetest.org, um, which you saw Dave demonstrate in his keynote. This waterfall represents Chrome over a cable connection uh, from Dallas, Virginia, and you can run it from China or anywhere. Um, and time to first paint is around 1.2 seconds, which you can see kind of, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a green line there around 1.2, and everything is done in 2.6 seconds. It's a low, total load time up there. And this is the waterfall view for my updated build that included the custom build of jQuery. The total number of bytes was reduced by about 3K, uh, but it didn't have much of an effect on load times. Uh, some of the numbers are reduced, but the differences are minuscule in this case. Um, I'm really making two points here. Applying the principle of using only what you need universally will have an effect on the performance of first load, but you should always be using tools like web page test to identify the changes that are actually needed. So in this case, maybe I, I didn't need a custom build. Another tool that I use is uh, Grunt Phantomus. Which is a, a Grunt plugin that uses PhantomJS to collect all sorts of metrics on a website. So hook this up to continuous integration and let it run. You can compare each commit and keep an eye out for any sudden unacceptable changes. So here we can see several commits and how they affect, uh, so that there's headers, um, DOM queries by class name, there's a ton. Let's see if I can scroll it. So cache, cookies, what is that, content length, body size, HTML size, uh, there's time to first paint, there's time to render, image size, and down at the bottom there's some jQuery specific metrics like uh, uh, how many DOM ready functions you have or how many jQuery selections you make on a particular page. I have zero because I put all my scripts at the end of the body. And for quick testing, I'm sure you know about developer tools. Um, you can use those to monitor network requests, run tools like Google PageSpeed, profile JavaScript, et cetera. So custom builds may not be suitable or necessary for every application, but they can provide uh, a useful mechanism for jQuery users, whether or not you use AMD, to streamline packages 
um, and we want you to be aware of this option so you can make informed decisions when deploying your projects. And as we all know, uh, beautiful design is only part of the equation. Sometimes, even when it's not pretty, an app will be preferred because it loads quickly and responds dutifully to user interaction. We like apps that just work like Excel. So what do we have in store for the future? Well, it's, uh, it's hard to say how useful it will be to partition every module into its individual methods. Um, we're still debating that. However, the core module, I think, would benefit from further fragmentation. It is theoretically useful, for instance, that jQuery's extend method be included on its own. You could pull in extend and just use that. And as time goes on, you'll find that there are other official jQuery modules available that are not included in, in the built version of jQuery. We already have one, which I won't go into, uh, but we're going to have more. Perhaps we'll have a live alternative Ajax implementation or, uh, or an effects module that uses request animation frame. So I want to encourage you to both diligently uh, explicate all, any and all of these resources and uh, avoid adopting all performance anachronisms. Uh, there are many helpful tips to get your sites and applications up to snuff, but I would dissuade you from treating guidelines as absolutes. Tools, not rules, as Paul Lewis said. And that's everything I got. Um, yeah.